Jennifer Noel Taylor is an energy healing practitioner, self-help motivator, and the CEO of Quantum Touch Incorporated. She has dedicated her life work to helping people discover the healing power of love. Stay tuned for my interview with Jennifer Noel Taylor. Welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast with your host, Emmett Muckles. Please visit iTunes, Stitcher, or EmmettMuckles.com to listen to all the episodes for free. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast. I am your host, Emmett Muckles, and you can't see me, but you would see the joy on my face and the pep in my step because we are here with Jennifer Noel Taylor, as I'm going to refer to as JT. <laughs> How are you today? Oh, I'm good. Yeah. Good day. I'm good. So Jennifer, you, you know, you were into the tech field. And technology sometimes can be the opposite of our intuitiveness, our spirituality, our connectedness with ourselves. I mean, I've, I've, I've been that person too. I'm a very techie person, but it bubbles up. It always hits you on the side of the head, says, hey, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Tell me what was your story? How did, how did you transgress and become to this wonderful person that you are now? Mm, that's a good question. So um, I, uh, I got a degree in, in computer science and uh, at Cal Poly and halfway through my major, uh, I discovered that I didn't really like computers that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I, I got kind of bored because I just got sick of logic using logic all the time. It seemed very predictable, yeah. too predictable. And uh, I saw other people in other departments, like the psychology department. I said, that's interesting to me. It's more uh, touchy-feely. It's more human nature. I like it. But yet I was locked into this major. And um, so I started a career as a software developer. And uh, I was really bored because I you know, go to my cubicle every day, sit around all day in a freezing cold, uh, you know, meat locker type of environment because it's always like 50 degrees in the office. I don't know why, but every office building's 50 degrees mm -hmm. and uh, just have to write uh, SQL software or test database code. And uh, I was just bored. So at freezing and bored. I mean, what was your interest before that? I mean, there had to be something that said, oh, that looks like a good one. I'll do that. You know, there was, and I ignored it. I was really, yeah, like, I got intimidated by what I was really interested in. I, I always thought I'd be a doctor. Oh. I always thought I'd go into medicine. And uh, I loved it. It was just really fascinating to me. And, and uh, But I was afraid, because I was afraid that if I went into medicine, that I would make a mistake. Yeah. And, yeah, right? So I said, if I make a mistake on a computer, not a big deal. At least that's what I thought. But if I make a mistake on a human... So I was afraid. So, yeah. So you did a, a, a major pivot. You know, most people who are into technology, were you in Silicon Valley? No, San Diego and then Central California. Oh, yeah. That, oh, that's right. Because you're, you're a graduate from SLO, San mm -hmm. Luis Obispo. San Luis Obispo. <laughs> so, I mean, like, you are in the, in, in the epicenter of, you know, things that are part of consciousness, you know, there's this thing that I say, the further you move west, the more laid back people are. So by the time you get to Hawaii, it's just, hey, let's just hang out and have fun. But you were, California is also this very technologically driven space and financially driven space because cost of living is so high, but it's all relative. How is it that you really said, I really must move into where my heart is, is telling me to go and developing Quantum Touch, Inc.? Well, um, what happened was uh, I got more and more depressed at my job. Been like, there. You know, like a lot of people, you hate Monday. It was just depressing, that Sunday evening feeling of dread 
uh, you get to the office Monday morning and you're counting the hours till Friday. <laughs> and, uh, like I actually at one point had a, you know, those prison lines and, uh, <laughs> on my blackboard or my whiteboard at the office. And uh, I just, it was that, it was really depressing. I got to the point where I'm like, I got to figure out what I'm really into or, or I'm going to, I'm going to lose it. Like I'm really going to, going to fall and, and uh, yeah, my depression is going to overtake me. So I, I, I felt like I, you know, I had really nothing to lose at some point. Yeah. I got so depressed. I said, I'm willing to make a change because I'm not going on like this. So at about the, the peak of my depression, I was also going to massage school at night. Yeah. So I do computers during the day and I got really interested in, in studying body work. And um, I discovered a course on energy medicine and, and something within me lit up and said, that's your, that's your life. Yeah. That's your, that's your destiny. That's what you're supposed to do with your life. And that was about uh, 15 years ago. And 15 years ago, nobody knew about energy medicine. Wait, was- wait, wait, wait. How is that possible? Because, you know, it came into my consciousness uh, one day when I was sitting in a bar in San Francisco mm-hmm. a- and a bike messenger comes in the door and he's beat up. He looks like he's just been hit with a shovel. And the bartender says, hey, f- whatever his name was, what happened to you? He's like, yeah, I was on my bike coming down the hill and someone opened a car door. And he said one sentence that stuck with me. He says, yeah, but, you know, the Chinese medicine lady took good care of me. I'll be back in no time. And I, at the time, I was having plantar fasciitis issues. Came back home to the Midwest and found an Asian woman who did acupuncture. And, like, in four sessions, it was gone. I had been plaguing me for two years. So that kind of started my journey on the energy healing. So... What what else really g- gelled everything for you that says, I'm going to move forward with this by hook or crook? So what happened was, so I got that download from the universe that said energy healing is your life path. And I was, my uh, response was, you are absolutely crazy universe. First of all, nobody makes money doing that. And second of all, nobody even barely knows what it is. It's just nuts. But I kept on, I was intrigued by it anyways. So what I did was I attended a lecture on uh, this modality called Quantum Touch by Richard Gordon, who was, who's now my business partner. And I sat at this lecture and I was super excited. And I got this, I got another message from the universe and the universe said, oh, by the way, you're supposed to run this, this company. <laughs> and my response was, what? I, I don't know this guy. What do I do? Just go up to him and say, by the way, the universe told me I'm supposed to run your company. Yeah. So, uh, but again, I was, I was intrigued. So I, I, I followed my heart and attended a workshop with Richard teaching and, uh, just one thing led to another and we moved in together. Ah, we moved in together, <laughs> right. And I didn't, I didn't even predict that coming, but that's just, you know, there's just a connection. And then I ended up running his company because at the time the company uh, was failing and the CEO, uh, the CEO at that time said, I need to get a real job. I'm quitting. Will you take over? So I said, okay, sure. I didn't really know what I was getting into. So no business background, but I just, I just went for it because I just had to, I felt compelled. Awesome. That's really awesome. I mean, like what I always say this, when you take a step in the path that you're supposed to go, you don't. You just have to have faith because the bricks for your next step will be revealed to you, which is, seems to be what exactly happened with you. And out of this, you're writing a book, or the book is supposed to come out in probably January or February. What is that book? So here's here's what happened. So I took that leap of faith. <laughs> <laughs> I took that leap of faith and you know, got into this business and I just assumed that the the money would come, you know, do what you love and the money will follow. Right. So I just assumed, all right, I took that leap of faith. I followed my heart and, and, and now I wait, you know, where, where's the money? And uh, there was none. That was the problem. I I went broke (laughs) doing what I love. The money didn't come. And it was really odd to me because I thought, well, I, what's the disconnect here? What's going on? Why is the money not coming? And that's why I wrote this book called Spiritual and Broke because I was spiritual <laughs> and broke. Because instead of the money didn't come, the debt 
debt and stress about money showed up instead. And that really surprised me because I didn't, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. Had you identified who your, who your perfect customer was before you really got into this? Or were you just really following your passion, your heart, and what the universe was telling you? You know, that's how I tend to operate. I tend to tend to follow my heart. And uh, this book is no exception. I just, uh, I gave kind of a lecture on the topic uh, before I even developed the book and, and people liked it. And I said, okay, I'm going to uh, write a book on this. So that's how that started. And uh, that was two years ago. So it took me two years to, to really write it. But um, I just felt inspired. And uh, I know a lot of people are in my predicament. They're, they're, you know, or where I was, where they're doing what they love and, and struggling to make ends meet. Yeah, uh, that's true. But you know what? It's, it's really bizarre because one of the things that I found out is people in this day and age talk about quit your job. But you don't really have to quit your job to do what you love. You just need to do what you love and maintain <laughs> yourself as good as possible, you know, by any means necessary, you know, legally, that is. Um, so with, with the book coming out, what is the main message that you would like people to take away from it? Uh, so the main message is, um, so a lot of people that I've run into who are spiritual and, and broke um, feel very upset at the universe, let's say. Um, I've been, you know, angry at God and, and begging the universe saying, all right, where's the money? Come on, come on, show me the money. And uh, really upset that it didn't come and, and feeling almost betrayed that I followed my heart and there was no money. <laughs> and so really, um, what I really learned from all that is that, um, what was, what was holding me back from manifesting abundance was this consciousness of victim martyr that I was doing. Oh, that's... I was feeling like a, yeah, I was feeling like a victim, for, you know, for my cause. I was feeling like a martyr. I was waiting for the universe to, to give me the money. So I was waiting for God, not realizing that maybe God was waiting for me to take action that would actually produce money. <laughs> so instead of you know, waiting for God, perhaps God is waiting for you. That, that's one of the major takeaways and uh, when I finally realized that I was doing this massive victim, you know, mentality on my life. So, you know, the, the worst irony of it all was that I was teaching that we create our reality because quantum healing or quantum touch teaches people that we create our health with our energy. So that's what we were teaching. You know, we create our reality. Yet I was teaching that, but I couldn't create money using what I was teaching. Right. So I felt like the worst hypocrite ever. I felt like a personal <laughs> trainer, you know, that eats ice cream at night at 2 a.m. in the morning. You know, you're sitting there picking out an ice cream and you're telling clients to eat salad. You know, that's what I felt like. So, um, yeah, once I realized what I was doing, the whole victim thing, it, it started to turn around. Awesome. So which came, when did you produce Love Incorporated Oh, Love Incorporated. Yeah, I made that book uh, in 2016. And that was uh, about how to help people tap into their, their inner guidance. And now you're going into like the next chapter, which is spiritual and broke. <laughs> yeah. Well, once you've tapped into your inner guidance, <laughs> what happens next? <laughs> and uh, that's kind of where the, what this book is, is covering. But, you know, you seem like you are actually what people need because... A lot of people, you know, the spiritual movement really began, I wouldn't say began, but it really got a big bump back in like 2007 when The Secret came out. So a lot of people started to convert. And The Secret was, it was a great incomplete premise because it really told everybody, just think about it and it'll come to you. Well, I can sit in prison and think about getting out, but until I go and try and, you know, lobby my case will I get out, you know, of jail or I can think about being thinner, but until I literally get off the couch, I'm not going to get thinner because you literally have to take action. You know, it starts in the mind and then manifests in the body and you have to be opportunistic when the, when things are presented to um, yourself. 
Um, and you live in Hawaii. You live in one of the most spiritual places I have been to. How does that affect your psyche and bringing all this into fruition? I think that, um, you know, anywhere you can go that's surrounded by nature can can enhance your ability to tap into your heart and your purpose and your intuition. Because nature has a wisdom to it. You know, nature has an energy to it and it has a wisdom. And if you can get out in nature and be around it, I find that the more I'm in nature, the more that I'm surrounded by it, the more that I can tap into my intuition and my purpose and my guidance. Awesome. Just something about that. And and water helps if you're around water. Um, If you don't have access to nature, which I highly recommend you figure out a way to get access to nature, um, which is kind of funny in our society, how often we just spend all the time indoors. Yeah. But, you know, getting in water can really help to, um, to help you connect to your guidance. Yeah. You know, my wife always says I need to go ground myself. She's like, you're, you're turning into the Hulk again. You're ready to smash stuff. Go take your shoes off and walk outside. I'm like, honey, it's 28 degrees outside. I am not walking in the grass. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of people have these blocks when it comes to abundance. And which blocks, I mean, outside of the one that you named, are there more that people are experiencing that are blocking their abundance from coming to them? Mm-hmm. I believe another big one is the worthiness feeling unworthy. And uh, that that interferes a lot with, for example, a lot of people in the healing arts feel uncomfortable charging money, they feel unworthy of charging money for their services. And, um, and and that would probably explain why they're broke. I mean, if they don't want to charge money for what they do, um, how do you make money? I mean, you can't. So I feel like that comes that goes hand in hand with feeling like you're not worthy feeling that you only should command $25 an hour. Um, feeling like, you know, you're too fat to help people or all these self judgments that we have, you know, I'm too fat or I'm not blah, 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 or I'm not as successful as Elizabeth Gilbert or whatever it is. Um, those judgments tend to get, get in the way of people actually making money. And, um, also, you know, judgments appear as uh, procrastination. Yeah. You know, one of the things we get, we get self judgmental and we tend to procrastinate. Um, it appears as, not wanting to promote yourself, not wanting to do, you know, so there's just a lot of ways that that unworthiness kind of gets in the way of what you need to do to actually create money. You know, one, this thing that I see is anytime you open up your phone or your computer, you go on Facebook, you go on Twitter, you're bombarded with people telling you they know the way. There's really no proof. You know, it's really easy with video technology to make yourself look extremely abundant when you may not be. Did you encounter any of these people, you know, looking for guidance or trying to find your way um, to come to who you are? Um, I believe that uh, when you hire, let's say, a coach or healer or even just get advice from friends it's, it's really important to really tap into what really resonates with you because um, even you could be with like Tony Robbins, you know, super successful and, and not everything he says may, may resonate with your truth. So I believe that ultimately you really know your own truth and that all the coaches and healers, their job is to help you find your own truth. And um, you know, so I really believe that people, including what I'm saying, you know, take what resonates and, and leave what doesn't, that we're just here to offer ways to find your own truth. And, and if you hear something that goes, that's a wow, that works for me, take that and use it. And if you hear something that you're, that you says, well, no, no, I don't think so. Just don't even, don't even worry about that. So that's what we're here for. Help you find your own truth. Now I've picked up that you've said this, that budgets don't work. Why do you say that? <laughs> <laughs> my budget is great for keeping me basically in the pocket of where I need to be. It's difficult because you have to have discipline to run a budget. That's the problem. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I, I tried to do a budget and, uh, you know, I thought, well, I, I need to cut up my credit cards, right? So I, I need to cut my spending. So I'll cut up the credit cards because that was, 
that was the only way I spent money was everything went on the credit card because I didn't have money in the bank account, right? So I charged it up to $35,000. You, you play this game. Okay, here's the game. Like you just keep your card under that $35,000 limit just enough so the interest charge doesn't bump it above <laughs> the limit. It was my monthly game, you know, so I just paid off just enough. So, And your interest is like 800 a month when you have that much uh, debt. So drive up that that credit card so um so i thought well that's my problem so i should cut this up so i cut it up and i felt you know good about myself and then i panicked then i like (laughs) fished through the trash at two in the morning pulled the credit card back out of the trash taped it back together and then i called the bank and ordered a new one but i still had the number intact so i could use it so for people with very low levels of self discipline like me i think budgets are really hard it's like a diet yeah you know, it's and like a diet i i went through the same thing but you know what i came out and came out with a different formula i actually use credit cards positively and what i found out was most most of your bills can be put on a credit card which was great for me so i went through the same thing i had these credit cards and i dumped them all and then i got one back one and I had a uh, like seven hundred dollar limit. My bills per month were five hundred. And then I said, "No, okay, if they're five hundred, then I need at least like twelve hundred, so I could go two months if I hit a rough patch." But I always pay it off every month. What they say is, is I owe, and I get points from it. But like you said, it must be you must have discipline and make sure you pay it off because one month I didn't. And all of a sudden I had like fifteen hundred bucks and it was really hard to pay that fifteen hundred bucks back. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't necessarily I didn't have the money. It was just what (laughs) it was just rough. So what do what tips do you have to get out of debt and to build up a savings? So, uh, so the first thing, um, getting out of debt, it's really important. Um, hopefully you don't have 35,000 like I did and you're just struggling to pay, make that massive. I think my interest rate was like somebody's rent. It was crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I recommend the first thing that I looked at was, okay, you're responsible for every dollar you spend and you're responsible for every dollar you make. That's what I told myself. So I said, I'm spending and making money. I, I can I can balance this. I'm I'm a person capable of balancing my money, just not necessarily with a budget. But I said, well, the first thing I'm gonna look at is my spending. Why am I, you know, spending twenty thousand a month or whatever? I was pretty high on my expenses, and uh, I looked at yeah, you know, I got my bank statement out, and I looked at everything I was spending money on. And I started to look through my closets. I started to clean out my closets. I started to look through, you know, what are my spending habits? And uh, I realized that I spent a lot of money on on things I didn't use or need or even want. I had a lot of stuff just sitting in the closet with the price tag still on it. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I looked at my housing too. I was way, you know, spending a lot of money on housing. And I looked at, do I love where I live? Because I'm spending $4,000 a month. On but, rent, do I love where I live? Wait, a minute, where was this? Were you in Santa California? Monica? Santa Monica is super expensive. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, super expensive. And I said, and the thing is, I was paying that amount of money, and my place had rats <laughs> and like sewage coming out of the toilets. It was a horrible place. And I said, okay, so I'm spending almost four thousand dollars a month on this place that is is just my worst nightmare. Like, what am I doing? You know, so really looking at is everything you're spending money on things that you actually love or things that you maybe feel obligated or, or there's some other agenda going on. And I realized that almost everything I was spending that money on, I didn't love at all. I, so once I took a look at that, um, I naturally started to curtail my expenses without really having to work at it. Yeah. I just asked myself that question every time I would spend money, is this what I love? And that applied to every bill. You know, you sound, you and I have this kindred energy about each other because like, as we are speaking, I'm going through a purge stage, which is I look around and say, do I really need this or do I want this? Is it still serving me? 
And do I plan to use it in the next six months? And have I used it in the last three? If I get a, at least two no's, it goes for sale. And then it goes towards something or another vacation or experience or something like that. So I fully understand exactly what you're saying with that. And you said earlier that the universe talks to you. What does that sound like? Um, I believe it feels like inspiration. I know that everyone out there feels inspired by something, I believe, whether it's kittens or, or whatever it is. And uh, to me, you know, when the universe talked to me, I felt very inspired, like, oh, yeah, that, that's why I'm here. That, that, that's inspired action, as I call it. So I believe that when we take inspired action, it's in our flow. It's in the highest good because it feels like it comes from the heart. And that's what it feels like. It, it bursts our heart open. Now, how can other people discover their purpose and be in touch with that? I mean, we all have these things like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go and learn how to hang glide or I'm going to start a knit crochet hat business. But how can people discover that? How can they really hone in so that they can be at one with themselves in the flow? I have a couple of techniques to do that. One is uh, if you can remember what you loved as a child, because I think all of us as children, you know, as I was a child, I felt like I was supposed to be a doctor. Um, all of us may have memories of, of what really lit us up as children, because I think if we can remember that, that's some clues. Um, you may love to paint as a child or, or read or write or, or uh, help uh, love animals, uh, just whatever it is. Um, cause I think we all knew when we were really young, what we came here to do. The other question I like to say is if you had $30 million right now, what would you be doing? Oh, that yeah, I'd probably be doing exactly what I'm doing at this moment. Mm -hmm. I would be speaking to people. That's what I'd love to do. I love to speak to people. I love to teach and I love to meet new people. I'm, I'm the kindergarten kid. Hi, what's your name? I have blocks. I'm that guy. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, my ex-wife used to say, you're too social. She's like, you can't even go into the into the gas station to buy gum without talking for five minutes. I was like, people are interesting. They have a different perspective. So that's what we have to do. Now, what are you going to do for 2019? You have the book coming out. Are you going to go on speaking tours, more podcasts? What's your... How can people... What, do, what can people expect from you in 2019? Well, in 2019, my plan is to launch the book and um, have some publisher. I have a publisher that's helped me produce it. Um, and then the, I love I love podcasts. I love speaking. I love being on shows. I love promotion. I love talking to people like you. I love, love the interchange of ideas. Yeah, and uh, so I'm hoping to use this book as a platform to uh, talk to a bunch of people and and share and philosophize that's share a, ideas. i like that word philosophize mm -hmm. <laughs> i love that word where can people reach you uh the best place to find me is jennifer uh, noel taylor.com and that's n-o-e-l n-o-e-l like christmas yes what about facebook twitter linkedin um pinterest all those things um yeah i'm on uh, i'm on facebook i'm on twitter i'm on youtube and they're all links on my website, um, jennifernoeltaylor.com. So you do, can click on those. Are you going to do any workshops or anything like that related to your book? You know, I'm going to see what comes out of it because I have some workshop ideas in mind. But um, I'm going to see like what kind of questions people have and what they want more help with specifically. And then I might take everyone's ideas and then create a workshop from the concept. Awesome. 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 Well, I want to thank you so much for being on the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're awesome. Thank you. Now you have to catch up with me, I'd say mid 2019. Because we have to do awesome. a recap of this because we're evolving creatures and, not, and who we are in this moment is a different person than we are in the next moment. And it's just as time progresses, we have different experiences that we can share and you will definitely have some wonderful experiences to share. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you know how this podcast ends, but guess what? I'm going to do it anyway. 
Remember, we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. We are slaves, believe it or not, to us because we are the connected God. And I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to say this word and I want you to say it to yourself and don't move your lips. Farfic Nugent. Now, you heard yourself say Farfic Nugent. You heard it with your ears. You might have even pictured an old Volkswagen if you're old enough. Who was that? That's the higher self. That's the fifth dimension you. And that fifth dimension is controlling the body. And the body is made up of these little things called cells. And when you started, one cell met another. 30 days later, there were a billion of them. So you're a billionaire. So now it's time for you to be the human being. Person of the sun of a color, no matter what color you are in the image of man and you're having an experience. Now it's time to captivate that experience. And when you meet another human being, treat them with love, honor, and respect. And also, as I always say, when you get out the shower, take some time in your naked state and just revel in that beautiful body of yours, no matter how you think of it, it is a gorgeous, beautiful, marvel of spiritual, social, conscious engineering. Love you all. Peace out.